Hello, this is Jessie with Jessie at Home. In this video, you are going to learn how to make these chain necklaces. Now, these chain necklaces are actually made by making one very, very long crochet chain and wrapping it around several times to make all of these extra different loops and then wrapping those together with another piece of yarn, the same kind of yarn, more of the same chain, a piece of fabric, something to hold it all together. And I'm just going to show you with the yarn in this video. Um, there are several purposes, several uses for these. These that are made out of a worsted weight yarn like this or even a smaller yarn can just be decorative necklaces. And the great thing about that is since all you need to do to make this is make a crochet chain, is these are a really great beginner project. You're just learning to crochet or you're just teaching somebody how to crochet and they want to complete something early on and feel like they've actually accomplished something other than just making a chain for miles and miles. Because most of us, when we start to learn to crochet, you make a chain for miles and miles. Maybe not literally, but it seems like it, right? This is something you can do with all of that chain. You can make several necklaces and now you feel accomplished and you're not, the person who's learning how to crochet isn't feeling discouraged and like they're never going to actually make anything. So this is great for that purpose. It's also great for kids. Girl Scouts can make them. Boy Scouts can make them for Mother's Day presents. Okay, they're nice, they're quick, they're simple, and they make really great little handmade gifts at any age. You can see these are actually necklaces that I've made. I have also made some with several strands of a more chunky yarn. You can see I've made a couple. And these are great for winter wear. And what I like to do with these is you can wear it long as a necklace, but you can also twist it and double it up and wear it as a cowl to keep your neck warm. And these are great for when you're going out, maybe to a restaurant or to a movie or something, because when you're outside and it's cold, you wear it like a cowl. And then when you get in where you're going, you untwist it and you wear it long like a necklace. And the reason I love this as I get inside and I'm wearing a scarf or a, or a cowl or something, my neck gets hot, so I have to take it off. And if I take it off, half the time I lose it. I put it on my chair, I put it in the sleeve of my coat, and then it falls out of the sleeve of my coat. Whatever, it's gone, and sometimes you can track it down again, sometimes you can't. The nice thing about this is you go in, you're outside, it's hot, it's cold, You've got this on as a cowl, you get inside, now your neck's hot, you take it off as a cowl and you wear it as a necklace, and now you've got this nice little necklace statement piece, but you're not going to lose your scarf or cowl or whatever. Okay, so that is basically what these are, these necklaces, and what we're going to learn how to make. Let's talk about the yarn and the crochet hooks for this project. Now, there is not a set yarn or a set crochet hook for this project. As you saw, I made some out of this uh, worsted weight yarn. These are made out of Red Heart Super Saver yarn and a US 8 or H or 5 millimeter crochet hook. This is a great way to start. So if you're just teaching somebody how to do this, just learning how to do this, you're looking for a especially for an inexpensive project such as for um, you know kids to make or to sell at a craft fair or something the Red Heart Super Saver is a really inexpensive and easy yarn to use and it has tons of really great fun colors. Look at all these awesome colors that you can get. Okay and there's also more muted colors if that's what you're looking for. Um, but you can certainly use any yarn you want. Like I showed you before, there's this fuzzy yarn. I used several different yarns in this one. Um, this is actually three, diff three or four different yarns. Um, same kind of yarn, just different colors. So there are several ways, several kinds of yarn you can use to make these. Pretty much whatever floats your boat. And what you need to do then is determine which hook is the proper hook for your yarn. So let's say you went with this um, Red Heart Super Saver and you pick up your crochet hook and you just want to kind of start going and see what happens. You make your little um, slip knot and then you start to make your chain. Okay, and you're making your chain. Just make it for a little while and then take a look and see what you have. And you see this chain? 
this chain is really too loopy for me. I don't like it. It's it's not, you see how, how this is a little tighter? This is a little too, too loopy, too out of control. I want something a little tighter than that. What this means when your chain is too loopy like this is the hook you've chosen is going to be too big for your chain, for your yarn, I mean, okay? So this, yarn, this hook was too big. Let's put it to the side. So we're going to get extreme and go for this hook now. That one was too big. Let's try this little tiny one, see what happens. Now, our first clue that there might be something wrong is that it's kind of really hard to actually catch the yarn with this hook. Might be a sign that the hook's a little small, but we're going to brave it out anyway and go for a little while just to see because, you know, we're curious like that. Now, there you go. You might like this. Personally, I don't like a chain that's this tight. It just, it's too tight for me. I don't, I don't like the look of it. I want it to be a little bit looser than that. So, let's try again. Grab the next one and see what happens. Okay, look at that. I like that. So this is the right hook for my yarn. Now, I was just, you know, being silly there and showing you really big and really small and just right, and I had obviously figured that all out beforehand. Your best bet as to where to start if you're using just one strand of yarn like I am here is to look at the yarn label and see what size hook it recommends and start with that size and then go up or down one size as needed maybe you might need to go up or down again or again you know but start with the size recommended on the label of the yarn is usually where I recommend starting when you're doing something like this where you've mixed a bunch of kinds of yarns together you just that's when it really is a lot more guessing where to start and after a while you get the hang of it but usually these really big ones are going to need like an N or an M hook which are 9, 9.5, 10 millimeters okay so now we have determined we have our yarn chosen and we've decided which hook is right for our use now that we have our yarn and our hook it's time to start making our necklace and that is a very simple thing to do first what you're going to do is you're going to keep making this chain and you, you might have a pre-existing necklace that is the length that you like you might not you might just kind of be winging it. What you want to do with this chain is make this chain and keep going until you can make one loop. That's obviously a little small. <laughs> so you can make one loop that is the size that you want. So make a chain until you can make one loop that is the length that you want for your necklace. So here you can see I have made this chain until it is the length that I want. I've kind of put it together into a little loop and decided that's the right length. And it's a lot shorter than this blue one, which was even shorter than the other two, um, the other two made out of this kind of yarn that I showed you. And the reason why it's shorter is because I'm going to make this for my daughter who really likes green. And she's only seven, so she doesn't need a necklace quite so long. So that's why I have chosen this size. You choose whichever length works for you. Once you've done that, once you have a chain that is the length you need, once you need a piece of scrap yarn in a different color so that you can see it and nothing fuzzy. If you're using fuzzy yarn, find something, just a nice acrylic worsted weight yarn works great for this because you need to be able to take it out without leaving fuzz behind. And this is going to actually be our stitch marker. You can certainly use a stitch marker as well if you, li if you like, but um, I've always got scrap yarn lying around, so it tends to be what I use. I have my chain the length that I want to go around the necklace once. So now I need to place a marker, and it's really simple. I I'm ready to make my next chain, and I'm just going to place this scrap of yarn in between the hook and 
the working yarn right there. I'm just going to hold it there and make my next chain. Okay, let me make a few more so you can see it better and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I made that chain around this scrap of yarn. So you can see that little scrap of yarn has been caught up in this chain. And this tells me how long one loop is. So now you can either decide ahead of time that you want five loops or three loops or seven loops or four loops or whatever. For some reason I like the odd numbers, but you can decide ahead of time how many loops you want or now at this point you can just keep going and just keep trying it and seeing what it looks like. So I'm going to go long enough to make a couple more loops and then come back and show you what that looks like so that we can decide if we need more loops. I have chained for a while now and I want to see if I have enough. What I'm going to do is make that loop and I know exactly where that loop stops because of the um, where that loop connects because of the marker I placed. Okay, so there's one and then I'm just going to keep on making the loops the same size to see Okay, I have about three loops. I have three loops here. So now I want to look at this and say, is this good? Do I like the three loops? You know, it could work for, for a little kid with three loops, but it's kind of fun to have a bunch. So I think I want to make two more loops. I think I want five, lo uh, five loops, yes, five loops for this. So I'm going to keep going a little bit longer until I have enough to make five loops. And this, you do the same thing with yours. You look at it, see how long it is, see how chunky it looks with the number of loops that you have, and then you decide, do you want more? Did you make too many? And you just go until you have what makes you happy. That's what's so fun about this pro project is you make it, unique to you or unique to the person you're making it for. You make what makes you happy. There's not a lot of rules here. So now keep on going until you have the amount of loops that make you happy. I have now made enough chain to wrap around five times as you can see and so now we're ready to clip our yarn and end the chain. And so all I do, like I said, I clipped the yarn. Make sure you leave yourself a nice size tail. And when you started, hopefully you left yourself a nice size tail too. Now you're just gonna, going to pinch your chain and pull that yarn that you cut through. And then give it a tug to tighten everything up. Okay, and now you're going to go ahead and wrap your yarn. You might say, okay, it's wrapped that's fine if you like it like this it's all good personally I like to try to get some of these twists out so what I tend to do is go back to the beginning and you can see this is the beginning because there's only one loop between the marker and the end as opposed to all of this between the marker and the end okay and I try to kind of untwist it So, you know, that's all untwisted, and then I wrap it once. Okay, and now that I've got it wrapped once, I can actually pull this marker out. It doesn't need to stay anymore. And now I'm going to keep untwisting. And wrapping, trying to get it about the same length. Oops, look at that, I added a little twist in. Silly me. I'm going to keep untwisting and then wrap. And I'm realistic that there might be a little bit of twist that happens, but at least this way there's not a lot. Oh, I didn't quite untwist enough there. There we go. And don't fret if you didn't get them exactly the right length because there is also a way that we're going to straighten that out as well. We're going to fix that. Um, there we go. So now I have it 
all laid out decently untwisted and you want to try to get that little area between the start and the end of your um, loop of your chain nice and flat on your table in front of you. Now what you're going to do is tie these two ends together. Okay, I like to use a square knot right over left, left over right. You use just whatever knot you make that um, will hold together. And if that is a square knot or an overhand knot, it doesn't matter as long as it's really going to hold together you're good to go. So make my knot and give it a pull which does kind of loosen it up a little bit but that's fine. And now I'm going to pick up my entire necklace. I'm going to put one, my both my hands inside my necklace like this. I'm going to stretch it and I'm just going to kind of go around. Have you ever seen one of those taffy pulling machines? It's kind of like that. Okay, and I'm just going around and you can go the other direction too if you want to, it doesn't matter. All this is doing is evening out those loops so that all five of my loops are the same length. If you wanted them uneven, then lay them out uneven and leave them like that. I wanted for this, sh for these short necklaces, I like them even. For the long necklaces that are, you know, the fuzzy long wintery necklaces, I actually purposefully make them uneven because I like that look for those. For these, I like them even, so this is how I even them out. And now that you've gotten them all even out, you lay it down again with that um, seam in front of you here. And you're now going to take your two ends of yarn and you're going to wrap them around the necklace in opposite directions. Okay. Bring them back over and tie them together. Pull it tight. You don't have to pull it so tight that you break your yarn, obviously. That would be bad. But pull it tight enough so that the chains aren't going to move. And now you have your necklace. It doesn't have the um, wrap on it yet. We'll get to that. But at least now you can see you have your necklace. Now it is time to wrap the little band around your um, necklace like these uh, have. And so you start off with a piece of yarn, a little longer than a yard, about a yard, a yard and a half. And what you can do is you can tie it onto one of these ends if you like. You can kind of use your, put, put it on a yarn needle and you can use your yarn needle to run it kind of through this whole little um, bunch that you've made with the knot around it, which is actually what I'm going to do. It doesn't actually need a yarn because we're going to wrap it nice and tightly. I mean, need a knot because we're going to wrap it nice and tightly. Okay, and it's okay that the ends are hanging out because we are going to be able to clip those off. So now what you want to do, you have this yarn ready to wrap, is you're just going to pinch and you're going to start about half an inch to one side of your, um, your knot where you have tied this bundle together. Start about half an inch to one side and start wrapping which there's a lot of yarn that goes through. I know it can be kind of tedious and it's very annoying to have to pull it all through every time, but if you don't, you will get tangles. So you're just going to start wrapping around and don't fret if on your first pass around, there's little pieces of the necklace that you can see through. When you get to the knot, don't fret if the knot pops out in between some of the wraps. That's totally okay because we're going to do several wraps. We're going to do a, two or three layers of the wrapping. The first layer is really just to kind of get it um, manageable. <laughs> Train it to be the size that you want and you know to get it to lay down nice and flat and everything or nice and tight in this little tube. 
this first layer is really just to kind of get your base coat down. All right. It is really, it's the crumb coat on the cake. It's the base coat on the wall. It's just your basic foundation for building this little loopy bit onto. So no worries about the first pass around. So once you have that to be the size that you want, you're going to start wrapping back the other direction. And the turn is sometimes a pain. <laughs> you just kind of have to futz with it to make sure that it turns on for you and doesn't just keep falling off the end. You can see I kind of shove my thumb right up next to it to keep it from sliding off the edge. And once you get a couple loops around, it's basically gonna stay. But since I've got a nice grip on it here, I'm just holding it anyway. And look, you can see as I do my second pass around, things are starting to um, clean up. It's not, you're not seeing the little bits popping through anymore. And obviously when you wrap this, it makes it, this section a little tighter. It pulls it tight together, so it makes it smaller. And the more times you wrap, the thicker this little section will be. And again, just like with so many things on this project, it's very much a matter of what makes you happy. So you're just going to keep going, keep wrapping however many times you need to wrap to have something that makes you happy. I have now wrapped three layers around this necklace. So I've gone all the way this way and then I went all the way back this way and then all the way back this way again. I have three layers around this necklace and I like that. I think that looks good for me. So now I need to end it off and what I'm going to do to end this off is you see how my yarn is going this direction? I'm going to turn my needle around and catch just a tiny bit right at the edge, a tiny bit of one of the chains right at the edge of this going the other direction. All right, just give it a little turn and pull that kind of tight. And then I'm going to pass that little knot kind of thing that I just made and I'm going to put my yarn needle in and I'm going to try to poke it through the whole thing. Now this is where if you poke it through with your finger, it is more likely to go through your finger than through the yarn. So either grab a thimble or go to your table, which I'm not going to put it on this board, but I'm going to move over to the edge where the board isn't and push. I just use the table to push it through. Okay. And oh, you might need to push a little bit more. There we go. Now pulling through at this point, you can kind of go for it if you've got calloused fingers. If not, a little piece of leather will um, work nicely if you have one of those little leather thimble things that you can grab with um, a piece of needle nose, a piece of needle nose pliers, a needle nose, a set of needle nose pliers, something like that. Grab your drawer tools and use your needle nose pliers. Um, but it can be a real pain. Mine is not behaving as I'm over at the corner of the screen where you can't see me anymore. Okay. My goodness, mine is not behaving. <laughs> well, I could edit this out and pretend like everything is hunky-dory, but this is what happens sometimes. There we go. Look, I got it through. Awesome. Now I'm just going to pull it all the way through. Now I'm going to go back again. I'm going to show you another way to go back that's a little bit easier. Well, first I'm going to get it through the rest of the way. You see how I didn't quite make it all the way through to the end? I'm going to put it back in kind of close to that same spot as even in the same spot if I can and go through the rest of the way. There we go. Now what I like to do for the second pass is kind of zigzag. I'm going to go back in and over a little bit. Go back in basically the same spot and go the opposite direction. Go back in basically the same spot and out the opposite direction. And one more. In basically the same spot. Out the opposite direction. Okay, there we go. Now, you pull your needle off 
and all you have to do is clip your threads. And to do that, what I do is I give them a tug. Any end that I have, I kind of give a nice little tug to, and then clip it as close as I can without clipping the wrap or any of the chains. So grab your end, give it a tug, clip it as close as you can. And it's okay if you pull that, if you pull a little bit because we'll straighten it out in a minute. All right, so grab that, give it a tug, clip as close as I can. I've only clipped three. There should be one more green. Here it is. Okay. Grab it, give it a tug, clip it as close as I can. Okay, now I kind of grab this, give it a tug to straighten everything back out again and make all those ends go inside and disappear. And look, you can't see any ends. And let's get all of this out of the screen. Ta-da! <laughs> so there you have it. I hope this has helped you to create a fun little necklace, something that you can do yourself when you're just starting to learn to crochet. You can do it when you're an expert at crocheting. You can use this as an early on project if you're teaching somebody else how to crochet um, and it's great like I said little kids can do this to give as gifts it's just a real fun quick and easy little project and I hope you have enjoyed it thank you